Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, Oakland, California. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is the moment of breakthrough television broadcast again. You are going to be mightily blessed in this edition, in the precious name of Jesus. I, I strongly believe that you are not there by accident. I believe you are there by divine appointment. So I want you to stay tuned because all it takes is one word from the Lord. I, I know today you are going to have an encounter in the precious name of Jesus because the word of God is going to come. It's going to come with a lot of power. Yes, uh, that, that, that's that much I can tell you. Now, the, the title of this edition is uh, the part two of the promise and the test of faith. So the promise, the promise that is uh, in redemption, the promise of good life, the promise of heavens, the promise of everything that the Lord, how, how do we experience it? Now, uh, in, in, in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 10, the Bible says, The thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He says, But I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So that is the promise that the purpose of the coming of Jesus Christ is that you can live in abundance. And he's not just talking about material abundance now. He's talking about uh, when everything is working in your life. When you live in the soundness of health, you live, you are serving God with joy, you have fulfillment in your places of work, you have fulfillment in the family life, in the head of the family, you have joy over your children, over your spouse, uh, uh, everything is fine. That, that is the abundance that he's talking about. You are serving God with righteousness and holiness. You are serving Him with joy. In serving God is not a task. That is part of the abundance that Jesus is talking about. So he said, I have come that you may have life uh, in abundance now. Uh, if when living is not like a task. Now today, that is not the experience of many people, even though that is the promise. And the Bible tells us that the Bible is a word, most sure word of prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse, verse 19. We have a much sure word of prophecy or the prophetic word confirmed. That's what the Bible says. So the word of God, the, the, the Bible is the bank of prophecy. The Bible is, is God speaking to you and I. Uh, the easiest way for you to begin to hear God is by reading you the word of the Lord. Because every page you read from the Bible is God speaking to you. Yes, but I can tell you. So no one can, he will eventually be able to say, well, I, I don't hear God. I can't hear his voice. If you can read, you can hear him. Because when you study God's word, it is God speaking to you. Now, the Bible says uh, we have the most sure word of prophecy, which is the word of God. So now, what the Bible says, uh, are the, uh, uh, the, 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 the promise of salvation, the promise, and those good things, the Bible says, that accompany salvation. Now, how do you turn them from being a promise to becoming a possession? So the promise and the test of faith. Now, let, let's see what the Bible says here. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. The Bible says, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed, redeemed the us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God. You see, he has made us kings and priests unto our God. That's a promise. And we shall reign on the earth. So, <laughs> he died that you and I should reign on the earth. 
Then I looked, then I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures, the elders, the number of them was 10,000 times, 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and glory, and blessing. Now, let, let me show you, show you something here. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, from verse 26, the Bible says, Come, let us make man in our own image, at our own likeness, and let them have dominion. So, God created you and I to live the life of dominion, the life of absolute authority, the life that we reign on us. Now, that was what we lost when Adam fell in the Garden of Eden. So, the Bible now says here, so when Jesus came, when he died, he shed his blood, he said, we have been ordained and he has made us kings and priests to reign on the earth. So, to restore the life of dominion. Now, hear me. Now, verse 12 says, uh, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. So, he was slain to receive all of this on my behalf and on your behalf. So, <laughs> God wants you to live in power. He wants you to live in riches. He wants you to live in wisdom. He wants you to have strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Like I say, he was linked to receive. So for any of these or all of these not to be manifesting in your life and you are a born again believer, something is wrong. He was slain to receive all of this on your behalf. Hear me. The Bible is the prophetic word confirmed. You can take away from it. All of this must manifest in your life. And you, you know, Jesus came to die for the whole world. That is, the people of all forms, from all peoples, all nations, all colors. So I don't care where you're coming from. If you are watching me on this program, he died for you. Tomorrow may be too late. Jesus will make your life better. Giving your life to Christ is a win-win situation. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. You must give your life to Christ. People of God, he died. He, paid. he just loved you the way you are. He, he, he came, he died before you were even born. People of God, so that he, he made provisions for you. You don't have to live in brokenness. You don't have to live in loneliness. You don't have to live in lack. You don't have to live in sickness. You go. You don't have to live in confusion. You go, you you go. You don't have to live as an embarrassment to yourself and, and to people. He died for you. He, he received all of these things: power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. He received all of this for you. Thank you, Jesus. That's why you must give your life to Christ, people of God. You must, Christ died for you. If you have never given your life to Christ, I will give you an opportunity to lead you to Christ right now. This is what many of us did many years ago and our lives have never remained the same. You must give your life to Christ. Christ is coming back again. But even then, before he comes back, you, you, you must you can experience him here on us. So if you want to give your life to Christ, just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for the finished work of Calvary. Thank you for your death on the cross. Thank you for your resurrection from the grave. Thank you because you shed your blood for me. I learned from your word that you receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, 
glory and blessing for me. Thank you for all that you have done. You didn't have to do that, but you did that because you love me. I, I, I confess you as the Lord and the Savior of my life. Come into my heart today. I confess you as the Lord of my life. In Jesus' precious name. If you have prayed that prayer, hear me, people of God, you are not born again. You are God's child. You now you have access to all his blessings. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He loved you so much. God loved you so much. He gave His Son to die for you, to redeem you from destruction. So that the power of sickness, the power of the enemy can be broken against your life. So that you don't have to live in defeat. You don't have to live in sorrow. You don't have to live in pain. You don't have to be at the mercy of Satan. Moreover, so that your glorious destiny can come to pass. Hear me, you have a glorious destiny in the Lord. You have a destiny that is glorious. Hear me, uh, your destiny is not whatever happens to you. Your destiny is God's own plan for your life. And I know that destiny, that, that, that plan is glorious. That's what the Bible tells me. So he died for you to have a whole of these things. So I, I'm glad you have given your life to Christ. And I'm glad you, that you have been a believer also. If you have been and you are with me on this uh, broadcast. Now one more thing you need to do. You must, uh, the Bible says, forsake you know the assembly of one another. You cannot uh, ignore uh, fellowshipping with a body, with a church body. Now, the church body is a, is a spiritual home for everyone. Everybody must belong to a church. Uh, there is nothing like home church. Yes, you can pray at home, you can have fellowship at home, you can study at home, but you need to make yourself a member of a Bible-believing church, like our church. You, you, you need to make yourself a, a membership, hear me, people of God, so that you can put yourself under a cover, spiritual covering, number one. Number two, you fellowship with brethren. Plus the fact that you must be in the service of the Lord. You are not serving God if you don't belong to a body. You need to serve Him in a church setting, a ministry, something you do for the Lord, uh, where you can use the gift of God for your life. That, that, that is the truth. And uh, of course, there are many great, great touches across the Bay Area, across the world. I, I, I don't know where you're watching me from. Uh, uh, and also, of, of course, you can come to Dominion Life Christian Center. We are here in Oakland. This is the Ecola Church, uh, where I preach every week. Uh, also, we have a, a church in Stockton, the city of Stockton. We have a church in uh, San Jose. Yes, uh, you, can, you, you can visit and eventually become a member. We want you to come, that's why we're there. So we want you to come so we can teach you the word of God. You can grow, especially if you have just, you, you, you've just given your life to Christ, you need to now go to church, read the Bible, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, the Bible says those who do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. So because the exploit of your life is by the level of your knowledge of Him. Not to know of him, but to know him. The deeper you go in your knowledge of him, the more exploit, the more manifestations of his power that you experience. You cannot have faith in him in the areas that you don't know him. So you must go to church. Uh, uh, that, that, that is just uh, very, very important. Now, now we're going into uh, the, the Bible says, uh, I, I'm talking on the promise and the test of faith. In other words, we have all those promises, but those promises must pass the test of faith. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, the Bible says, above all, Taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
all the fear that the shield of faith. So faith is a shield. So you don't have a shield, you don't have a cover if you don't have faith. Let me say above all. So when you build your faith, you will level your mountains. When you build your faith, so uh, uh, so faith is very very important. So talking about the test of faith and the promise. Now, uh, 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 a great example from God's word is Abraham. In Romans chapter 14 from verse 13, the Bible says, For the promise that it will be the heir of the world was not to Abraham to his seed from the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So, not because he merited it, not because he deserved it at the beginning, it was just because of the righteousness of faith. That's what it is. Faith in Jesus. Now, verse 14 says, For if this one of the law are his, faith is made Void. Now let's let, let me jump to verse seventeen. Verse seventeen, the Bible says, Romans chapter four and verse seventeen, the Bible says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Let me say this to you: every revelation you encounter from God's word is a pro, is a prophecy. Therefore, is a promise. So the Lord said to Abraham, remember Abraham was believing God for a child. Then God said to him, I have made thee a father of many nations. In case you are watching me with me or with me on this broadcast, and you are believing God for a child, your own child, I don't believe that any sickness or infirmity or Satan can stop everyone from carrying their baby. You will carry your baby in the precious name of Jesus. If you are believing God for one, I'm going to pray with you. The power of God will overshadow you. The spirit and the power of uh, the, the infirmity or of barrenness will be destroyed. Yes, thank you, Jesus. God said to Abraham, I have made thee a father of many nations. I say to you, if, 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 if the blessing of the fruit of the womb is your desire, you are a father, you are a joyful mother in the precious name of Jesus. It won't be long, it will come to pass. Because very shortly, as I pray, let, let me pray right now. Thank you, Jesus. Because I, I, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the more I go into that world, the more I know God wants to bless somebody. Uh, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, as many as are tuned in to this broadcast, under the sound of my voice, Trusting you for the fruit of the womb for a child. Lord, I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost, your anointing, will come over them and destroy every medical endurance, every medical reason, every physical reason, every biological reason. Whatever is a reason that's an hindrance, let it be destroyed by your power in the precious name of Jesus. Receive the power to conceive in Jesus' precious name. God has done it. Thank you, Jesus. Now the Bible says, I have made you a father of many nations. God said to Abraham. Now let's see. In the presence of him whom he believed. So Abraham believed. It was a promise. The Bible says he believed. Yes, so the Bible says, in the presence of him whom he believed. So Abraham believed. You need to fully believe the promise, if it is from the Lord, for it to come to pass in your life. Now, uh, 
God promised Abraham just as he has promised you and I today. Because the word of God is a promise. Now, he says, he believed. Now, God who gives life to the dead and cause those things which do not exist as though they did. So, but the Bible says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. He said, God will cause those things that do not exist as though they did. So now, for we walk by faith and not by sight. So even if they don't exist, but we have faith. We believe. Because those things that we don't see, those things that are not in existence, God speaks. Like as if they are in existence. Hear me, your babies, your blessing is already spoken by God into existence. But you must believe like Abraham. Let me say Abraham believed. Abraham believed. Now he says, Who contrary to hope in hope believed? So Abraham believed in hopelessness. Now I'm speaking on the promise and the test of faith. So Abraham believed God when there was nothing to believe. Against all hopes, he had hope, the Bible says. The Bible says, so that he became the father of many nations according to, according to what was spoken. Now, what was spoken about you will only become, will only come to pass when you believe like Abraham believed. Now, let's see what the Bible says here. It says, I'm not being weak in faith, verse 19. Uh, Romans 4, 19. I'm not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now, it doesn't matter what the doctors have said to you. Yes, they are great people. They tell you what they see. But the Bible says, Abraham did not consider his body already dead, not the deadness of Sarah's womb. So, uh, uh, Sarah's womb was dead. Abraham's body was dead. Praise the Lord. He says, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, it did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. It did not waver. It didn't doubt God once. If you are going to see the promise of God come to pass in your life, you can't doubt Him. You cannot waver. God is able to do whatever He says He will do in your life. Everything that God says to you in his word, hear me, people of God, God is faithful to bring it to pass. But you must believe him. You must have faith in him. So you must act, take steps of faith. We all believe God. We all know God can heal. But how many of us are, believe, are, are trusting God? by faith for healing we all trust him for abundance for financial prosperity how many of us are obeying him by faith so faith is the vehicle faith is what turns the promise into personal possession otherwise you see it you won't experience it but my prayer and the purpose of the moment of breakthrough is to bring breakthrough to your home. Is to bring the manifestations of God's power into your life. So that breakthrough becomes an experience. Miracles, exploit becomes what you see on every day. So that the power of Satan can be destroyed over your life. But God needs your faith, people of God. <laughs> and the good news is this. Uh, your appetite for faith determines what you have the life of faith that you live so there is nothing limiting you the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God faith
faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you hear, the more faith grows in you. I know your faith is growing right now. I know you are faith right now just because you are hearing a powerful word of faith. That's what it is. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you want to put yourself in an environment that you hear God's word. You hear the word of faith. And one of the things that you need to pay attention to as believers, be careful of who speaks into your life. There are believers, yes, they will speak you out of faith. You don't need the environment where people speak fear, doubts, impossibilities. When this becomes people's confession into your life, put yourself in an environment of faith. Hear me, people of God. Uh, uh, faith comes by hearing, not just what you hear from a broker like this or in the church or in the word of God. Even people that speaks into your life, there are people that can choke faith out of your life. You need to be sensitive to your environment, people of God, so that God's power can reach you. I have no doubts that your moment of breakthrough has begun in all areas of life. Write or call me because you are going to have a testimony. God is going to visit you in the precious name of Jesus. Also, I will give you an opportunity to turn things around in your finances. We are under the blessing of God. We are blessed as a church. I am a blessed man as an individual. That is the truth. All to the glory of God's name. This blessing comes from the Lord. So, you can be part of this blessing by sending your seeds, your offerings, your checks to the Moment of Breakthrough television program. The address is on the screen. You are going to be blessed. The only thing that has a future is a seed that is sown. Your material, your money resources, they are seeds in the hand of God. They will bring your harvest. You are blessed in Jesus' precious name. Great to know that you are there. I am Pastor Isaac of Dominion Life Christian Center in Oakland and of the Moment of Breakthrough Television Broadcast. This is to let you get acquainted with our schedules and our locations. We meet here in Oakland, 7 p.m. every Thursday for the Dominion from Coast to Coast service every Thursday, 7 p.m. and the Dominion celebration service on Sundays. Every Sunday, that's 11 a.m. I'll be glad to see you. Then also in San Jose, our address is 286 Bernard Avenue, 286 Bernard Avenue in San Jose, California. Our schedule in San Jose is 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and 10 a.m. on Sunday. And good news, Dominion Life is coming to Stockton. From the last Sunday of February, we're going to be in Stockton. Hallelujah, that's good news. And our address, our location in Stockton is 7170 West Lane, somewhere close to Kaiser Permanente in Stockton or Costco. That's somewhere around those two locations. 7170 West Lane in Stockton, California. So two and three. Stockton. Our schedules in Stockton are Wednesday 7 p.m., Friday 7.30 p.m. for Supernatural Warfare and also on Sundays 10 a.m. I look forward to seeing you in all these services. These services are powerfully anointed and I see God's power at work in your life. God bless you.